Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Baker and Timo Show. My name is Timo, and this is episode six of the Big Damn Team Challenge. Now, when we finished up last time, we just barely made the playoffs. And when I say just barely, let's take a look at what I'm talking about. I'm talking about by a single point. So, I mean, am I happy we're here? Yes, of course. Um, we'll see if it all works out. Obviously, we had just signed Mantha. Uh, to a deal and he only has well we didn't sign him but we traded for him hopefully we can sign him um, as he only has one year left in his contract so here we are just barely making the playoffs look at that look at that big win in the end to get us over the hump of 88 points and just over Edmonton so I still don't know who we're playing we're going to take a look at uh, some of the stats for the the team um, obviously Joe Thornton was just doing incredible at 40 years old he actually had 90 points in the season I actually haven't really looked at his advanced stats all season just because he's been so good. Actually, he's pretty even. That's honestly really good. So Clarence Pete, look at Clarence Pete. 66 takeaways compared to his 40. That's not bad at all. Pete was obviously, I mean, this kid's going to be a superstar in the league, obviously. He had 52 goals in his rookie season. 52 goals. Hands down, this kid is winning the Calder. Uh, 79 points total, just shy of an 82 point season hopefully he can keep that up in the playoffs and then look brent burns was right there with them with 79 points as well and then just all the way down the board we had a lot of secondary scoring which just makes me so happy um i'm honestly i, I don't know i'm just excited i think this team could actually do something in the playoffs our goaltending admittedly wasn't the best um throughout the season but with that being our weak point, it doesn't mean that we don't have strong points. And obviously, uh, we do have a strong offensive upside. So, who knows? We might just upset somebody here in the playoffs. So, what I want to do is uh, sim ahead into the playoffs. So, let's take a look. Simming ahead. All right. I thought it was going to sim us all the way ahead. Instead, it's doing this. Okay. Season is complete. Who are we going to be playing? Well, first, we do have some team news. Uh, the Glasgow Giants have qualified for the Stanley Cup playoffs for the first time in franchise history. Will they be the next Golden Knights and make a push to the playoff finals? Look at them. NHL.com gassing us up a little bit there. Wow, we're playing the Chicago Blackhawks. Chicago Blackhawks had a pretty damn good season, if I do say so myself. 53 wins, 23 losses, and uh, 6 overtime losses. I'd actually like to take a look at the stats, uh, see how they did in comparison to our team in the regular season, because I think that's important. Um, so Chicago, ah, uh, yeah, they were atop the division. That makes sense. I mean, we were the 8th overall. So let's take a look at... Uh, some of their advanced stats. I'd like, you know what? More than anything, I think what we should be looking at now that I think about it, is uh, I'd like to see how many goals for and goals against. So goals against 208, goals for 290. So they're almost at four goals for per game. Or four goal? Yeah, that's not bad. Three and a half, two, two and a half. That's actually going to be pretty tough to beat. We were at, yeah, just almost at 500 there, almost even. 3.22 goals per game and uh, three against. So like I said, goaltending has kind of been obviously our issue throughout this season. We will see how that plays out. The other thing I'd like to see is see who their leaders were on that Chicago team. I'm, I think, you know, it's probably safe to say that it's going to be Patty Kane uh, leading the way. Maybe Deborah Cat? Old Deborah's Cat? That's what I like to call Debrin Cat. I call him Deborah's Cat. Uh, so yeah, Kaner with 105 points. I wonder if that led the NHL. We'll have to take a look quick. Pavelski, they got Joe Pavelski. This is something I didn't know. This makes me actually uh, a little scared to face them here. That's a, that's a big, strong body up front. Uh, net front presence who can, who can tip the puck really well. Taves having another good year in a row, just over a point per uh, game. Okay, so yeah. Little Debra's Cat did pretty well there. Dylan Strom did well. Perlina. They have very similar output to our team offensively i would say except a little bit better so i think we have to give them the edge there we'll take a look at their goaltending uh their goaltending is actually pretty similar to ours as well um but i would say once again they have a bit of an edge over our team so that is unfortunate i would like to see who finished at the top of the league in terms of scoring 
Ovechkin with 170 points, 17 points, and 74 goals. Record scratch, 74 goals. What in the hell? What? What? My God. Taylor Hall, 54 goals, and then Clarence Pete, third in the league. I mean, that's that's something to be excited about, but I, my God. Ovechkin still getting it done with 74 goals in the season. I wonder what that puts him at career stats wise. I, I would think we should take a look. I mean, just for just for shits and giggles, we should probably take a look here. Okay, so we've got him now sitting at 596 assists in his career, 732 goals. That is just incredible. 1,328 points in 1,166 games. Jeez, that's uh, that's impressive. But, I mean, look at Clarence Pete. 52 goals in his rookie season. I mean, this kid, we drafted him this year. That kid's going to be an absolute stud. Um, so I think the only other thing that I really want to take a look at before we get started is uh, just see these other matchups here. So let's um, take a look at the breakdown. Just briefly, let's take a look at this. This breakdown this playoff tree all right so on the west in the west I should say we have Nashville matching up against Colorado so one of those guys could be our future uh, future opponent if we happen to get by this beast team that is Chicago uh, Calgary versus Edmonton that's a great series a battle of Alberta I love it and then you have the Ducks versus the Stars on the other side uh, in the east we have Philly versus New York we have the Capitals versus Ottawa. We have Buffalo versus Boston and Toronto versus Columbus. Um, quickly, I think I'll make some some predictions here. I'm going to say, I don't know why, but I really feel like Philly's going to get over New York in an upset. I don't know what the standings were, but I feel like that's what it's going to be. Capitals should beat Ottawa. Boston should beat Buffalo. And I think I'm going to get, I'm going to take Toronto over Columbus. And then in our side... Uh, I gotta go for our boys, so obviously Glasgow over Chicago. Um, I'm gonna say Colorado over Nashville. We're gonna go with Edmonton over Calgary, and we're gonna say Dallas over the Ducks. And uh, that's how we're gonna that's how we're gonna call it. We'll see how she goes. So what I'm gonna be doing for the playoffs, as this is the first time we've been to the playoffs in this series, is I'm going to go to the games, and then I'm basically. Uh, going to simulate them at eight times speed we will commentate over top of that and then for elimination games I will do full three minute periods with commentary by yours truly over top so I want to take a quick look at our lines uh, I think everything should still be set from where it was we do have this plus three which is great on our second line um, we can't make it work up top so this is what we're gonna do uh, we're going to lead into the playoffs with Markstrom and Nett because he is our starting goaltender. Um, we don't see his, his career stats there. I could take a quick look, though, and see how he did this season. So this season with Glasgow, he played 36, or sorry, 62 games, won 36 of them, lost 20, had four uh, overtime losses, uh, three shutouts, a 9-10 save percentage, and 2.70 goals against average. So as you can see, he was pretty similar to what... Uh, we saw Mr. Crawford with on the Blackhawks. So this is going to be interesting. I mean, uh, I, I really don't know how to feel about this matchup. I, I think they definitely probably have the advantage in everything. Uh, but I think with that being said, it, they only seem like slight advantages to me. Um, they do have probably a lot more experience than we do. But we've got big bodies. Big bodies on our side. So you know what? Let's get this first one going. We're going to simulate it, like I said, at eight times and uh, just see how it plays out. All right, so we got the first period well underway here. Glasgow going on a power play first and they don't get anything going. Another power play. Come on guys, you gotta get a shot there. They get one shot on the power play. So, so far special teams, maybe we're gonna have to take a look at them after this game if they can't start clicking uh, later. So, so far though, a good period for us. And we do get on the board with five seconds left to go in the period. We get on the board, Berglund getting one past. Mr. Crawford, uh, so let's keep it going into the second period. I can't believe we scored late like that. Sometimes those are really, uh, those are momentum killers. We get another one. Burns getting one by Crawford. So looks like the special teams uh, 
If anything, maybe we just uh, tuckered them out. There we go. Good penalty kill. So special teams is kind of uh, in the middle of the road. Chase on gets one past Crawford. Crawford's not looking good here. Berglund gets a, another one, his second of the game. And we are going into the third period of this first game with 27 shots to 15. We're actually leading them by 12 shots right now and a four to nothing lead. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I said, I thought they, they had the advantage in everything, a slight advantage albeit, but I was not expecting this result. Third period action, let's keep it up. And they get a power play goal. Clarence Pete with his first ever playoff goal, getting it done. The kid still has what it takes, even in the high pressure scenarios. Okay, so Kaner's gonna get one by, but are we really surprised by that? The guy had 105 points. Kaner gets another one. He can't do it all by himself, can he? Only uh, three minutes left to go in this game. They're on the power play. We kill another one. So overall, I'd say special teams, they managed to kill, what, two penalties? They took two power plays early in the game, didn't score on them, but they did capitalize later. So I would say overall special teams did pretty well. And I think we're probably just going to end up leaving them uh, the way they were. But I would like to take a look at the advanced stats uh, of this game. So we'll take a look at Chicago first. Obviously, we're not surprised by Kane doing so well. Kane, Curlini, oh, I didn't realize they have Kurt Isles and, and Dylon. Who are the five best rappers? Dylon, Dylon, and Dylon. All right, so advanced stats. Uh, we don't get advanced stats? I really thought we still had advanced stats in here, but we don't. So that's unfortunate, but I mean, this is kind of what you'd expect. Uh, Kane shows up, no surprise there. Um, for our boys, though, uh, let's take a look here. Mantha. I didn't notice. I honestly didn't notice. Mantha getting it done in the playoffs with the plus three, three assists. Berglund with a big night, three points, two goals, one assist. Burns, two points, one goal, one assist. Uh, Carlson getting it done with Burns, apparently. And then you got Perrieko. Chason had a goal as well. Bailey with the helper. And Clarence Peake gets his first ever playoff goal. He had six shots on net for a 16.7% shooting percentage. And if I recall correctly... That was actually right around where it was in the regular season for him. So it's good to see that uh, he's still shooting and uh, having success doing it. All right, so we get through the first game. Oh, that is terrible news. Game one is done. And Mr. Joe Thornton is going to go out with a concussion. I'm not going to lie. I meant to adjust uh, injuries before starting the playoffs because obviously they were an issue they've been slowing down the series in terms of uh you know fluidity with the series uh it, it really does happen to stop um it, it just kind of slows us down too much you know what i mean so not crazy about this right now by any means uh, i think what we're gonna have to do is call somebody up oh that's very unfortunate i'm not gonna lie i am um, Big Joe's, uh, he's a huge part, obviously, of that top-line offense uh, with the, the amount of assists that he had in the regular season. He's really probably the one feeding Pete most of the time, and Berglund was the one on that line who was also doing well. So we're going to have to call somebody up. I'm pretty sure most of these guys in the minors are large enough, but I have to double-check. All right, he's big enough. Uh, let's check his uh, advanced stats if they'll let us. I'd like to see how he did this season. He only played three games with us. Uh, but you know what? He did pretty damn well in the, in the minors. So that's all I want to see. I want to see that you can play uh, defensively sound. Uh, you know, it's a center that went out anyhow. So we'll call him up. We'll edit our lines. I always let, um, I always let the management and the minors take care of all of the line changes and everything down there. Because to be honest... We don't really have any prospects down there right now, so I'm just kind of letting it be for now. All right, so Joe's out. That is uh, definitely a heartbreaker. That's a heartbreaker indeed. That's not something you want to see, especially after we did so well in game one. You know, there, I, don't, I don't think there's any doubting that Joe Thornton had a lot to do with that. So, and it's concussion too. You know, I don't know if he's uh, if we've got an injury report on him yet, but that does not look good. Still pending, still pending. So that's unfortunate. 
All right, well, we go into game two at an obvious uh, disadvantage now. If we didn't have a disadvantage in game one, we managed to pull it out. But hopefully the boys can rally around our captain, Joe Thornton. Uh, we'll see. Can they get it done? Game two. Chicago's obviously going to come out strong in this one, and they look like they are. They have four shots. We have none. They're on the power play now, and they get one by. Pavelski gets one by on their first power play of the game. Chicago taking the one to nothing lead. All right, so... Chicago keeping at it, out shooting us by nine right now. Now we're starting to get a couple back, it looks like. And that's the end of the first period. So obviously Chicago took it to us in that first period. The, the absence of Joe Thornton is clearly being felt. Um, but that doesn't mean we're not going to press on. Uh, look at that. We get a power play right away. Bailey scoring. We actually played Bailey on our uh, defensive line on that power play. So obviously he must have got a good point shot. Kalorn. Kalorn gets one by us. Playing with Chicago now. He was playing with Detroit too. I remember because I wanted to go after him and then I realized, of course, he's not tall enough. Not tall enough. And they get one by with 43 seconds left in the period. That is a killer. Strom getting one by Markstrom there. They do have 32 shots already. So Markstrom's actually having a pretty good game, all things considered, as we go into the third period. All right, so we need two goals. We need some per late period heroics by the looks of it. We're on a power play here, and we don't get one by. But we are tying it up almost in shots, and we do get one by. Sanford beats Crawford. They now have over 40 shots, under five minutes left to go. Time winding down, and they score again on the empty net. Patty Kane getting one, at one by there. So... Obviously, we lose that one. Like I said, the uh, absence of Joe Thornton's presence uh, clearly being felt there. Pavelski getting two points in that game. Kaner, uh, Deborah's cat, that little fuzzy black cat, Deborah. Um, I don't know why. I just I feel like Deborah's cat would be a little black cat. I do. Anyways, so their guys are clearly uh, showing up in that game. And Crawford with a 9-2-3 save percentage. Honestly, I don't think our goaltender did that bad. Uh, I think Markstrom actually stood up pretty tall uh, in a game where we were at a, a, a disadvantage pretty clear and pretty early. Uh, okay, so Mantha still getting it done. I like to see that. Burns gets two assists, so that's another good night for him. Carlos right there with him. I like that lineup that we have going, that matchup. Wow, he faced 43 shots and made 40 saves. He had better than an okay game. That was an incredible game for Markstrom. The goals against... Uh, does not tell the story there. It's the save percentage. So, going into the uh, game three of the series. And we have another player that's been hurt. So that is unfortunate. We're going to have to edit these lines here quick. All right. Take a look at these lines once again. Uh, who do we call up now? We might have to end up playing Alexiak there because... Or I could send him back down. That's what I'll do. I'll send him down because he's been hurt. Um, and then we'll call up another player in replacement. I'd imagine we'll have a report on Thornton soon. I, mean, I think we'd have to. So in the system, we need a Ford. Are you tall enough, Mueller? Yep, he's a big enough boy, so you're coming up, pal. All right. What's the matter? Injured? Oh, really? I didn't know that. That's unfortunate. I had no idea that you couldn't uh, send down an injured player. Look at me not knowing things. All right, well, we'll just take him off, and hopefully it'll let us call him up. We're at 20 skaters anyways. We should be able to call him up. There we go. Got another guy up in the mix. All right, so where is he? It's Mueller, 73 overall. Not great. Still has some chemistry though. That's good. At least he's got the chemistry boost. Because if he didn't have the chemistry boost, that would be unfortunate. Uh, little Giants can have best lines. There we go. Alright, so... Now we will advance to the next game.
So Gauthier is ready to come back to the lineup. That uh, that helps a little bit. At least we can slot him in where, where Mueller is. I don't even think he is a center, but to be honest, we could use the help. And actually, he is a center. Look at that. Look at me not knowing, but uh, that works. I'm glad he's back. Get a little bit of help back to the playoffs. Obviously, still no word on Thornton yet. Uh, or maybe we should take a look and just find out. If he's still being evaluated, that's great. Oh, May 11th. My God. Well... That's uh, that's pretty much the worst news you can get in the playoffs. But uh, we're going to press on. I mean, game two was close. It was close. So here we go into game three. Hopefully we can get a big win here. Uh, I mean, any win without Thornton now is going to be a huge win. To be completely honest, the guy is the heart and soul of the team. Here they are getting off to a good start again. They're out shooting us like crazy. And we get the first goal. Zadarov gets one by Crawford. And there's still quite a bit of time left in this period. He's trying to even up the shots. We get another one. Sanford with his second in two games. Very impressive. And then Saad gets one on the power play for Chicago. So our power play, our penalty kill, I should say, coming up short on that one. Going into the second period with the 2-1 to one lead, being outshot by eight shots. So we'll see how this second period goes. We're on a power play right off the hop here. We get a few shots, but it's not enough. They strike back immediately. Now we have a tie game in the second. Still lots of time here. Pavelski gets one by us. It's a 3-2 game. 4-2 game. I can't even finish my sentence. Ah, this doesn't look good. We do strike back, though. Perrieko getting one probably from the blue line. We're coming, coming back with some shots here, but it doesn't matter. As Pavelski gets another one by, this one's probably going to be just too much honestly probably too much headed into the third once again they have a ton of shots 34 shots they're just peppering us if we could get that type of output from our guys maybe we have a chance of coming back but we'd really have to do a good job of uh keeping them from getting any shots and here they are on a power play the penalty kill comes up huge but once again now here we go hansel i was gonna say that they have over 40 shots twice in two games here but we oh looking to tie it up and Zuccarello puts a dagger in us. 7-4. to four. It looks like they may have gotten that shorthanded. And uh, poor Markstrom, even with the amount of shots he'd faced there, his save percentage is not going to be faring very well in that one as he faced 47 shots and let in 7 goals. Whew. So, I mean, the guys are trying. I mean, they put up 4. They were, they were within one goal a couple of times in that game. But ultimately, it just hasn't been enough. Perry Aiko gets three points in that game. That's nice to see. Zadaroff as well. Uh, so there, that's good output. Mantha gets another point. It's nice to see that he's uh, actually doing pretty well with us. Sanford with the plus three in that game. So obviously, he, uh, you know, with two points, he did pretty well in that one. Um, Burns didn't get on the board in that game, so that's unfortunate. Um, let's take a look at our goaltending quick, too. We might as well just to see where we stand uh, okay so Markstrom apparently has an 8.20 goals against average that doesn't make sense but unless we had switched him out maybe we had switched him out I don't know either way that doesn't make any sense uh, so obviously our goaltenders are getting beat up in this one it's not looking too good for us so far Let's see who did well for them Pavelski another three-point game uh, Debrincat, Keith, Kane, all the big boys getting it done for their team. I will say Taves seems to be kind of non-existent. I don't know if he, is he hurt? No, he's out there. He's just, he's not the uh, playoff performer that they'd probably like him to be. If he could get going too, you never know what this team would be doing to us right now. Uh, once again, like I said, with, with Mr. Thornton being out until May, I just don't know if we can hang on. If we can get a win here, it would go a long way. You know, they're up 2-1 to one in the series. If we can tie this up, who knows? Who knows? I don't think there's any point in changing any lines, to be completely honest. It's just that it's that absence of Thornton that's really killing us. If, uh, if we have more of the same results in this game, I will go look at the lines and change it up. But they already get off to a good start. First shot of the game, and they score. Uh, we do get a penalty kill there. There we go. Our special team's getting it done. Carlo gets one by. Carlo's been doing well ever since we uh, paired him up with Burns. Him and Burns have some good chemistry, and uh, Carlo's been feeling it. He's been getting the, 
the benefit of that. So, And they do get one late in the period. That's unfortunate. With a minute and 30 left to go, they get one by. So we squeak by in the first period, only down one. Actually, our shots wasn't our shots on were too bad that uh, game. So hopefully we can keep that up. I think uh, in a game where we're closer in shots, we definitely have a better chance. But as I say that, I might as well put my damn foot in my mouth because Kaloran gets one by and they're up three uh, now as Kane gets another one. We need to strike back here in the second period or else it's looking very bleak for the third. I I don't know. This is I, Honestly, this could be a very different series if uh, Thornton didn't get hurt. Gustafson now getting one by two. And uh, I just don't know what to say anymore. Like I said, I think it would be a different series if we hadn't lost Thornton. We'll look at some line changes, but I don't know what's going to change as they get another one. Sanford, that's nice to see Sanford doing so well because, uh, you know, at least he's getting something done. Fair gets one done. He's a fourth liner. That's not bad. Eight to three, though. We just can't keep the pucks out of our net. I don't know what's going on. Hayes gets one for us. I mean, we're still scoring. They obviously just have more offense than we do. In a game where we were basically tied in shots, maybe we were. I think we were tied in shots by the end. They win 8-4, 20-27 to in shots. Or 20-27, I should say. 27 and 27 is what I'm trying to say. Uh, so, yeah, we'll look at the stats again, see who performed for us. Hayes and Chase on our uh, lower line guys. Zadarov still doing well. Burns doing well there too. Uh, Clarence Pete, he got a point, but he's been a little quiet in these playoffs. He's been a little bit quiet, and I think it's probably due to that absence of uh, of Thornton. So at this point, we just have to take a look at the lines. Now, obviously, this isn't working out. It's going to be the same guys on their team that are doing well again. Actually, Drake Ragla, I wasn't expecting that. Kagula, I don't even know how to say his name. I never say it right. Keith, Kane, Anisimov, uh, Debrincat, Pavelski, and Taves actually gets one. Kaloran got one too. Kaloran's actually done all right for them. That's the second time he's popped up. All right, so this is uh, at this point, this is a potential elimination game. So uh, I'm going to do some commentary for this game. I'm going to try and do it pretty professionally. So expect to uh, hear that in your ears some goodness after we change these lines because I think we just owe it to ourselves to try something let's throw Mantha up there see if he can get something going with the big boys uh, I think that's just what we have to do see if this will work uh, that way we have what we've got a power forward a two-way forward and another power forward hopefully that works I don't know for sure but this third line got some work done last game, obviously. Chase on uh, Hayes and Fair all did okay. And this line's got some plus uh, chemistry, so we'll keep them there. This line's done pretty well together, but this line's doing the best out of anybody. And there's no surprise there with the chemistry. I think we just have to keep giving it to Markstrom. I, ha I hate that we have to do that to him. as uh, he He's had a rough go of it, but he's our starting goaltender. He's... You know, he's the one that we got to put our faith in. And this isn't the time to be changing goalies. Um, you know, yeah, we made some line changes, but it's not the time to change goalies. So we're going to advance ahead to that game. And then we're going to take a look at a beautiful game, hopefully. Hopefully we can come back in this one. So uh, get ready for some sweet, sweet commentary, guys. I hope you're ready for it. Let's go. So, in an unfortunate series of events, uh, I was unable to record the game. I realized uh, after the fact that I didn't have audio, so we wouldn't have had audio for the game. We would have had my commentary, but we wouldn't have had audio. So, a uh, big mistake on my part. Um, obviously, we lost 7-4. to four. It was not a good game for us. Um, Brent Burns stood tall, or about as tall as he could anyways. Uh, we'll take a look, obviously, at our team stats uh, quickly here before we finish up the episode um, you know it, it's it's a tough break obviously we lost Joe Thornton in game one after having a really good game there we had a great game or was it game two nonetheless so we had Mantha and Burns doing pretty well Zadarov and Sanford Pete does get a couple of goals a couple assists so he had four points in his first ever playoff series Perrieka was there, Bailey was there, everyone was kind of, a, you know, they were contributing, but uh, like I said, 
It looked like they definitely had the advantage in terms of offense. It was a slight advantage, uh, but obviously with Bur uh, with uh, Thornton going out, the heart and soul of our team early in the series, that was uh, obviously, you know, what uh, was the thorn in our side and what ultimately took us out. You know, with an 8-4-9 save percentage, you can't do much. He did have, face a ton of shots through those games, but um, ultimately just us losing Thornton is, I think... Uh, is what did it to us I think we probably had a bit of a chance anyways in that series I was actually getting to be a little optimistic after after game one there so um that's pretty much all we have for this episode with that being said unfortunately we don't have any highlights this time either because my intent was to record that game but obviously uh you know a bit of a hiccup there so we will have highlights in the upcoming episode as well but uh, this is unfortunately going to have to be the end of the episode as there's nothing else we can do. The next episode obviously is going to feature our draft. I guess what we can do quickly is uh, we could take a look at the draft class for you guys and just show you what's going to be available in the future for us in this draft class. We did make the playoffs, which is going to uh, is going to hurt us a little bit. You know, I, I'd still... I know I keep talking about um, our man Thornton going down, but so there's obviously some good players available. Byfield is a guy that we have our eyes on because he's 6'4". So, you know, a big part of this challenge is, the only part of this challenge is actually having guys that are 6'4 or larger. So obviously we're only gonna be able to draft guys that are that. So we do have some scouting going on some of these big boys that are out there. There's a few of them, so. With any luck, we will get our hands on one of them. No scouts in the region. That's unfortunate, but I'm pretty sure, you know, we're going to we're gonna have a good look at some of these guys in the upcoming episode when we get our draft underway in the offseason. See if there's any acquisitions that we need to uh, make to shore up this team. But like I said, I was honestly getting a little bit optimistic after that first win. So maybe we'll just see how things go. So that's the end of episode six of the Big Damn Team Challenge. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Baker and Timel Show, and we'll see you next time.